Kwa you know, no, Totenda Mwari with a man committed to preaching. I can't tell you the immediate history in yeah, the last two days. And Kwani Zuku, the end, Dr. Wazara, yeah. <laughs> but it taught me something. The history of the last two days. This man has the calling of God upon his life. Am I seeing Baba Tower of Sin? Jigans. Unakaita so. Guns of Chitara. Moon, a cabot for no man. That was a comment. So I thank you, Dr. Wazan. Come, my brother. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. That today is a day that you have chosen in your own love your own understanding to bless us your people to remind us that you are faithful to tell us again that we are not without a shepherd father we want to thank you glory be to your name so Father, we yield ourselves to your Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and say, have your way with us this afternoon. But that no one, no one, no one leaves this place without a parcel from you, without a blessing from you, without a change from you, without strength for their weakness, mm. with that oil of gladness, <coughs> with a garment of praise, mm. in the name of Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. I bring you greetings. How come I get an interpreter? <laughs> you think I'm disabled? <laughs> I love you, Leroy. Let's stay together. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am bringing special greetings from Faith Ministries Church. Um, we are in the warfare. And uh, this week alone, our senior pastor was involved in an accident. And and his father passed away yesterday on a separate incident. And uh, we were supposed to be at the funeral today. But he said you must go to Glad Tidings. And so I'm here. I bring you greetings from my family as well. As you heard, my wife has gone to the ladies' conference. And uh, she's involved and leads a ministry called Threshing Floor Prayer Ministry. And Threshing Floor does nothing but pray for Zimbabwe. So this September, 
Owens was September. They start their eighth year for praying for this country. They pray every day without fail. And so I know that this country is in the center of God's plan. And I want to assure you today that there is a way. There is a way. There is a way. In Jesus Christ. Uh, we are about to send our last born. You know we have four children. We are about to send our last born to university next month. So it will be my wife and I at home. And my wife, I am okay with it. Because that's how we started. But my wife is struggling. And I tried to tell her that there was a man in the scriptures. The father of Samuel. When his wife had no children and she was crying for children, he said, Am I not better than ten sons to you? And I've tried to make my wife scriptural. But that script revelation is still to hit her. Amen. I am so excited to be here. As you heard from Pastor Simba, this is my church. And I'm excited that I'm wearing the colors of the choir. That shows that I'm in the spirit. You think it's a joke? But I know that God has got some unity between us. And so when I was praying coming here, I said, Father, I'm praying for the congregation. I'm praying for the conference. I'm praying for the meeting. But I want to pray for myself. There is something that was on your heart. When you put this meeting, together. I said I don't want to miss even a small piece of it. I said Lord I'm laying hands on myself and I am going to receive more than I'm going to give. Because God does nothing out of chance. There is something that God is depositing this morning. And something is depositing this afternoon as well. It's depositing it tomorrow and the day after. And it is going to increase. But the Lord is our shepherd, we heard. The Lord is our shepherd, we heard. I want to read something else to you. I want you to say to the person next to you that there is a way. There is a way. Say there is a way. Because I'm reading in my Bible in the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 6. The Bible says this Thomas in verse 5. Thomas verse 5. Lord, we do not know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I love to read books. But my most favorite books are biographies. Especially an autobiography. Because an autobiography is written by the person himself. Writing about him, it's himself. So you can be sure that he is telling you the truth. And so Jesus says, No one is saying about Jesus, he is saying it himself. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. If I ask Leroy here, introduce me. You will say, this is Dr. M.C. Wazara. That's how we'll 
introduce me. But if I introduce myself, I am going to tell you something else. I'm going to say my name is Matthew Shamunor Wawaza. And he is going to say he's from Harare. But I'm going to tell you that I was born in Chinoy. I grew up in Kadoma. I wrote my grade 7 in Zimba. I was in Chilezi. Our house is in Kapuzuma. That's what I'm going to tell you. When he introduces me, you get to know this much. When I introduce myself, when I say arise, when 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 they say stand up or Kapuzuma, I withhold myself. But I went there eight years. I also feel I went there eight years. I went I also feel I I I I I he says, not what you have read about me. He says, I, 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 I am the way. I'm the truth. And the life. Then he says, I want you to be clear again. No one with an ambition to come to the Father. So God is also able. 
people too. When I make a wrong turn, but no, he he's see able it. to say recalculating. <laughs>
Mutimai is not the child of her husband. Because a wife was cloned from the husband. You remember that? There was no father. He took the same cells. And made another one exactly. Remember that man. But let's get back to the Lord. So they solved it now. If we can clone now, they are worried about the Chinese making children without fathers. And it's a big problem. Because kidneys are a problem to find in the world. So they are saying that if you are sick, they must, they must clone you. And have another baby who's born who's you. And then take the kidneys from that child. And put them onto you. And then now you don't reject them. And then they just put the child to sleep. That's where the Christians are saying this science has gone too far. But God can have a child without a father. And now it can even be done by scientists. People didn't believe it because God did it so many years ago. But God is increasing the revelation. So what we are calling revelation is great one with God. I want us to go to Isaiah chapter 40. Say that there is a way. Say there is a way. There is a way. Is a way. Is a way. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40. Bible, not in Isaiah chapter 40. I want to read from the first verse. Comfort. I'll, I'll just read up to verse 6. I want someone with the Shona Bible, please, to read it for me. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her. For her warfare is ended, her iniquity is pardoned, and she has received from the Lord double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, saying, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be brought low. Crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places made smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Nyara zai, nyara zai vanu vangu. Dilo shnoreva mwari mwenyu. Taurai, jingava raiza Jerusalema. Dami zilai kwa ari. Kutikurwa kwa avo kwa pera. Kutishaka ipashawa, shaka nganiwa. Kutivapiwa, muoko wa Jehovah. Kuro wa, kwa kari, kwa kari ngana pamsuro peshikishawa. Izgira umu dami zira. Achiti gazirai, murenja nzira ya Jehova. Rami zirai, mwariwedu mkwa kwa msango. Mipata yose icha zazwa. Makomo ose na shiko mojose icha derezwa. Panama koronga, pacha nzaniswa. Pasaka nzana, pacha ituwa bani. Kupinya kwa Jehova, kucharatitwa. Nyama yose icha shuwa na pangechete. Nokuti muromo wa Jehova, wataura ishosho. Isu hiru noti. Dani zirai, munga akati. Dicha dani zireiko. Nyama yose uskwa. Kuna kakose. Kwa shokose. Paka itu wa seru wa resamu. I want to give a little bit of background. We are in chapter 40 of Isaiah. I'm glad tidings I came with a word for you today. Glad tidings now we are in The first 39 chapters of Isaiah. My chapter 39 Isaiah. Generally speak about how God is going to judge Israel for her rebellion. But when we get to chapter 40, God is beginning to change. I want you to listen to me prophetically. Because in this country you have gone 39 years. And roughly speaking, the outcome of our lives, the Bible says that there is warfare. But tell her that her warfare has ended. And that her iniquity has been 
that God is giving her double for her sin. And he says, then he goes to prophesy about John. And he says that he, this is a voice in the wilderness. Say, prepare the way of the Lord. But the part that I like the most, it says that every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Say that there is a way. Say that there is a way. Say that there is a way. The glory of the Lord is that thing that we see. When God has finished doing what he wanted to do. What we see, what we hear, when God has finished doing what he wants to do, the glory of fire is not the flames, it is the heat that comes out. The glory of the fire is in the heat of the boiling water. The glory of, of ice. God has finished. I told you that we had a, a conference last week. It was called the Threshing Floor Conference. It's called, it was called Birthing a Nation. I thought that Pastor Simba was at the conference. Because the word came very clear. And said, harder times are ahead. Harder times are ahead. I told you before. Jesus said, Just why not? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Anyone who's looking for direction asks for the way. Anyone who doesn't know what is really going on asks for the truth. Anyone who's struggling to have joy asks for the life. You know that the politicians of this country are not able to bring Zimbabwe out of its current situation. So if you are a headmaster, if you are a politician, if you are a leader of a ministry, unless you are being pruned by God, your fruit can't endure. We have tried everything. We have tried everything long, long ago. This Zimbabwe is crying for the wisdom of God. Of God. 
situation to me. Listen to me. This country. I said there's a way. I said there's a way. We can we can get out of our situation. God showed us demons. He just showed the snippets of demons. You have no idea. What God has in store under and over and over. But that remains locked. Silver and gold are mine, says the Lord. Treasures of darkness will I show to you. So we must now start praying for the positions, not for the people. And the Lord, I pray for this position. That whoever sits on it cooperates with your agenda. church up so that we would intercede I want you to remember what happened to Joshua here's the word your country may be out of order but your God is not out of order your country may be out of orbit, but God is still in orbit. God says that you are not victims. I want to, I want to explain this. As long as you remain a victim, you are not qualified to be a judge. Unless you are still suffering prejudice, you can't dispense justice. Am I clear? Mm. Okay, let me take a simple example. So maybe you are an orphan. And your father died. Or you don't know your father. It is possible to go through life. Just saying, you know me, guys. I am an orphan. My father left me. Up till now, I don't have a birth certificate. I am negotiating with my uncle, my mother's sister, my mother's brother. If I can use their surname. That's why I'm like this. I don't have an O-level certificate. I don't have an A-level certificate. Now that may be true. 
But that is not who you are. You heard what the pastor said. God does not identify you by your number plate. God does not identify you by your father who left you. God identifies you by the deposit of God that he put inside of you. And you are not qualified to lead until you have stopped seeing yourself as a victim. Everyone has a story. But yours is not the greatest story. I wish you had been in my church two weeks ago. And one of the fathers in our church went and shared his testimony. His father left him when he was six. Or his mother left when he was six. He was put in a boy's home in England from when he was six to when he was 17. In an orphanage. And then he, he, he started working. Then he started to look after his brothers that had also been left by his mother. And one of his brothers um, got in trouble with drugs or something like that. And he himself, this pastor, had found the Lord. And he had a girl that he wanted to marry who was staying out at another place. Then he said, please look after my brother. So maybe he can come to the Lord. Then she turned out pregnant from the young brother. Then she went ahead and had a baby. And this pastor started to look after this baby. And you tell me that your story is bad. You tell me that there is no one who has seen what you have seen. God is not willing for you to live your life as a victim. Do you understand that Ian Smith did something to us? Ian Smith did something to our current politicians. But if you recite it every time, you have not yet stopped being a victim of Ian Smith. So you can't qualify to dispense justice. So I want to favor orphans because I'm an orphan. So you can't give justice to other people because you prefer nereras. So you can't give people uh, things because they haven't gone through what you went through. You are not yet qualified to lead as long as you don't shed your victim mentality. And God is saying to you, Zimbabwe, who told you you were a victim? Who told you that I could not work through your circumstances? Who told you that I am not God still? Jesus. You know, there's a difference between being a victim and a victor. There's a difference. I listened very carefully when Pastor Simba was speaking. He said that we are more than conquerors. We, 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 we are not the ones who get the victory. But we get the glory. Now, the difference between a victim and a victor. The victim sees God through his problem. I want you to understand that. This is my problem. Uh, this is school fees. This is unemployment. This is Zesa. This is political injustice. This is, this is my problem. This is God. Here. I am a victim. And this is a victim. Mwari. Mwari. Do not die. Do not 
I want to work for his chimney. But there's this time I know. If I could only get some money, I would wash. If there was electricity, I would wake up and read my Bible. I don't know. 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 I don't but a, a, a victor sees his problem and You 
you are going to be delivered. But it is our job to search God until he tells us what we are supposed to do. Now here's the problem with the church. We want, I say there's a way. God has a shout for you. God has a prescription for you. But the problem with the church, we want to live anyhow. We want to live our life and they knock and they cry and the father opens for them I've never seen a father who changes the handle of the door and puts it low down to accommodate the height of the baby all the father does he says go to the kitchen eat drink eat your vegetables drink in this way you shall grow and one day the child reaches the door and the child opens the door and before long the child is going in and out God will not compromise his standards he will not lower the door handle for us to go through we can't do this thing without reading the word there is no truth that young people don't like the word because the word of the Lord is sharper than a two-edged sword able to separate between the intentions and the heart between bone and marrow there are doctors here there's a lot of students from uh, glad titans then I meet at Parrenyatwa and you know why I love this church do you know why it's my church is that you guys keep me very spiritual when I want to shout someone at someone at the airport, Peter comes and says, Magadim Fundis. And then when I want to shout at the medical students, then one says, Did you talk to us? I'm going to have a conference with Glenn Titans. And then they'll go out if I am there. So you kill me righteous. That's why I love this church. But the word of God in medicine, we, are, we have not been able to separate bone and, and marrow. We, we don't have an instrument. We can get the marrow. We can get the bone. But we can't separate where they are joined. There's no instrument like that. But the Bible tells me that the word of God is so precise. It's able to go and say, Doctor, here's your bone. Doctor, here's your marrow. The word of God. The word of God, you see? Right. The Bible says he sent his word and healed our disease. Amen. Amen. Do you know when, when, when you when you've got a headache, you don't rub panadol on your head. Because don't root him out. Because that's where the pain is. Why don't you rub anatine on your head? Because it doesn't work. When you've got a tummy ache, you don't rub things on your tummy. But when you have a headache, you take Panadol. Once Panadol is inside, it starts to look for where there's a headache. By itself. It leaves the hand. It leaves the leg. And it gets somewhere here. And your headache was on the right. And it goes there. And then after 35 minutes, and then you say I'm dead. How did it get there? Just take the word of God. It knows how to go in. And it will find where your disease is. And it will heal it. But we can't ask for God's blessing without fulfilling his requirements. 
God requires us to pray. It's not the 15 minutes per day that we have been used to. If God is going to give you a specific answer for your life, it's not going to come. I did catechism as a young child. And when I used to come to eat, when, I used, to, when it used to come time to eat, Amen. I didn't even know what I was saying. Now God is asking us to pray. To pray until something happens. To pray his word. Not just to pray uh, 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 when we come to church. To have a lifetime of prayer. A lifestyle of prayer. You know one day I was going to Mondoro to St. Michael's Hospital. I don't know if I ever told you this story. And God had started to teach us that you are not praying enough. And I got into my car. When I got to Harare South there, I said, God, you and I, now I am going to pray. I want you to hear me. I said, I'm Matthew Chamnor Wawasa. Born in Chinoy. Whose father died when I was 11. But you are my father. You said your father to the fatherless. You said that in Ephesians chapter 2. That I am a, you are my masterpiece. Created for good works. Before the foundation of the earth. I said, Lord, I'm ready for the good works. I'm in a crowd, but I now know that I'm good. And that you're going to do good things with me. I said, Lord, I'm laying my hand on my head. I want you to anoint me. Not with anyone watching. I want you to put something in me. When you created me, there was something that you wanted. I'm ready to be it. I said, God, I'm a surgeon. Remove everything in me that makes me fail to be who I'm supposed to be. I Whether it's painful or not, remove it, Lord. I want to be like Christ. I want to be like you. I'm blessed, Lord. I'm blessed, Lord. I'm blessed, Lord. I'm a giver. I am a giver. You know, I got past Chitziwa uh, Farm. Uh, then I, 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 I felt like there was something in the car. And I was scared now. So I didn't know whether I had actually now died and, and gone. And so I parked my car. And I heard the voice of God saying, worship me. Do you understand that when you pray, God will give you a prescription. I'm telling you the truth. God said to me before, I'll finish this story. God said to me before, when I was praying, driving home. And I said, Lord, my son is about to go to university, my last son. The money that the university is asking for is a lot. And Father, but I, I believe you. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. I said, Lord, I need an answer for Simbarasha. What do I do? And there was a lady who was selling uh, uh, Musika on the side of the road. And God said, stop and buy everything. And I said, Lord, <laughs> he said, buy everything she's selling. He said, I don't know if I have money, enough. And he said, buy everything she has. He says, what kind of a miracle are you expecting from me? I said, I want a big one. I want Simbarash's fees fully paid. He says, do a miracle of the same size for someone else. And I went and I bought 
And I took these things home. Then we started to pray at home. And we believed God was going to hear us about Sibarashi. And two days later, God said, take everything back. <laughs> and give it back to that lady. I think that they went and burnt that, those things. I think they went and burned those things, suspecting How could you buy everything mine? And then you want to keep the money. And then you say, do not defund me. I just pray that the Lord also prevailed on them to understand that there was something prophetic happening. But the long and short of it, Simbarashi got a scholarship. Two years later. So God said, worship me. And I, I, and I started to worship, you know, like a doctor. Sitting in a car. <laughs> and I put a worship song. I worship you, Lord. <laughs> you wonderful Lord. What was the word? Can I also to a bad one? Ne 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 if you have not uh, encountered a very difficult problem, uh, oh no, oh no, oh no, salad. You, you pray like a Jessica. And I was, ah, I worship you, Lord. Beautiful are you. God, God said, worship me. So I said, okay, I'll do it in tongues. And I started speaking in tongues. And he said, worship me. So I opened the door of my car at the lay-by and I started to jump outside and worshiping God and there was a bus that went by and I just saw the red lights of the brakes on and people looking through the, the bus then they carried on but my prescription is not the same as yours and you must get your prescription from God but I've come to tell you that if you follow God's plan in this season you are going to hear God this faith that that pastor was talking about you are not going to see it sleeping the same number of hours eating the same amount of food not knowing the amount of scriptures that you are supposed to know I'm not a prosperity preacher. And this is But I want to give you another word. This is the season for wealth transfer. Did you hear what I said? This is the season for wealth transfer. What frightens speculators what frightens speculators encourages believers <laughs> the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. God is not saying that the wicked are just going to come walking to you. I say, oh, I heard you were at the conference. I want to give you my house. It's not what that God doesn't do it like that. But God creates conditions in the owner that he loses value in his asset. And to you at a discount in a season like this. I want you to understand this. I heard pastor saying that you haven't started planting churches. This is the time to look for land. 
Today of the churches, a time will come. You heard about the persecution of the church. Where they're going to say every church is to be audited. Every church must pay tax. Every church must pay full price for land. When the economy is stable. But when the economy is as it is, you say we want a piece of land in Berengwa. I say take, take four acres. Because in a time of war, people are unsteady. And that is the time for wealth transfer. I'm not talking about picking up money when you live here. I'm not talking about that kind of wealth. I'm talking about God removing your shame. I'm talking about God restoring to you what the canker worm ate. I'm talking about God causing you to be in rhythm with his kingdom. Because God is looking for such people as can respond to his gospel without thinking too much. You know the exchange rate is going to come to one to two. Please write it down. Don't mm, mm, mm. It's going to be done by God. Now there is some things that you must do now that you won't be able to do later. Do you hear what I said? Now there are some things that you must do now. God tells us to plant in a drought. Faith doesn't wait for the perfect conditions. You heard that we have a shepherd with power. So when you start to obey him, there is a, there is a hotel that I can't mention. When we grew up, we wanted to see what was going on inside. But my mother wouldn't let me. And she didn't want us to go through it. It was a bad hotel. But I wanted to see what was in there. Wind 20 years later. No, in fact, go back. Uh, uh, when I was growing up, I used to see this hotel. Then when I came from Chiretz, I teamed up with one doctor in town. And we tried to buy the hotel to make it into a hospital. And then we were pulled the first one. And we didn't get the hotel. In 1997. But I prayed. And I wrote in my other brown Bible. And I said, God, these people have pulled me a first one. I'm praying that you pull an even faster one. <laughs> then I saw the hotel being bought. It became a school. I said, okay, maybe I didn't hear the Lord. But there were nine things that I wrote in that Bible in 1999. Seven of them the Lord has fulfilled now. But the long and short of it, on the 15th of September, 15th September, we are admitting our first patient in that hotel. Because the Lord worked a fast one somehow and created circumstances that have made us be able to develop what was always in our heart to develop there. Say there's a way. Say there's a way. I want to read something to you. A 
I told you that there's a way. I said that the country may be out of orbit, but God is in orbit. I said that this is a season of wealth transfer. But God doesn't do witchcraft. There's a certain lifestyle that we must lead for him to arrive at us. Did you hear what I said? God said, consecrate yourself. You know, the lady who was caught in adultery, people like to quote the grace of God. People like to say, God said to her, woman, where are the people that condemn you? And she said, they're not there. Then he said, neither do I condemn you. That's, that's where we stop. And we say, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. But Jesus had not finished. The most important thing that Jesus said after that is go and sin no more. For my power to fully activate in your life, you must abandon your lifestyle of sin. You can't come to church just to confess your sin so that you feel better. And you walk straight back into that sin. You can't sit in the house of God like this and already be planning what you are going to do after the service and expect God to give you a solution to the problem that you are facing. God expects us to then consecrate ourselves. Young people, it's not true that you can get away with trying whatever you want to try. It's not true. If you mess with alcohol, some people are going to be taken out by alcohol. If you mess around with sexual immorality, some people are going to be taken out by that. If you choose a life of violence, some people are going to be taken out by it. All I'm saying, young people, don't blend in. It's so difficult in this day and age for us to do what is right as young people. My daughter graduated and I went to her school. They wanted to put badges on us. And I was excited about my daughter's school, so I wanted the badge. So I, it was purple. Like the university colors. Then I looked closely. And it said gay pride. It says I support gay pride. And you see all these people wearing these badges. At a school. At college. Now you must understand. God works through angels, through hosts. He calls them ministering spirits. And he dispatches them with answers to our situation. So when they come and find me as a pastor and say that I support gay pride, the angel is going to look. It can't come close. That's why God said every sin that a man commits is outside his body. Except sexual immorality. Because he says that the angels don't know how to come near you. When you become one with a prostitute. So what am I saying? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. chapter 10. I said, God, listen, God is going to help us. You are going to receive favor. 
You are going to be allowed to go through this difficult patch without a scar. And you are going to come out at the end with more than what you went in with. But we have to separate ourselves. One Corinthians chapter ten. And these things were our examples that we should not be lusters after evil as they also lusted. Nor should we be idolaters as some of them, as it is written, before the people sat down to eat and drink, they rose up to play. Nor let us commit fornication, nor let us tempt Christ, nor let us murmur. There are four categories of sin that are mentioned there. I want to end by saying this. 3.6 million people left Egypt into the desert. 600,000 entered. The rest died in the desert because of idolatry, because of fornication, because of tempting Christ, because of memory. The Bible says that these things are written as examples for us upon whom the end of the ages has come so that we would be warned that God is not going to compromise his standard just to accommodate my weakness. God wants to bless us. But he also wants us to consecrate ourselves. I said that there is a way. You are not a victim. God has an answer for every person that is here today. He has an answer for our country. He is the good shepherd. But he is also the way. And God wants to show the way to many of us that are here. But He will not do it unless we are willing to change. You know, I don't want to. Um, Belabor the point. But when we were praying with my wife, we felt very strongly that God is sending a warning to the church that I have a place of Goshen for you. I'm able to protect you. I'm able to provide for you. I'm able to preserve you. I've done it many times before. I've always had a remnant. He says, but I need you to cooperate with me. When God is about to deliver his people, there are some things that he seems to not have cared about before. That he starts to insist on. You know, they've started forgetting to circumcise the Israelites in the desert. But when they were about to cross, he said to Moses, they are not going anywhere like this he said circumcise them 40 years they had thrown away the flint knives I want to say to you my brother and my sister you may have been living a certain lifestyle and you felt like you were getting away with it even though you knew it was wrong 
But God is saying where I'm about to take you. Uh, you have to be circumcised. You have to leave.